This is Rating Descended. Where we watch IMDb's Worst 250 so you don't have to. My name is Abigail Ward. And I'm Michelle St. Clair. And tonight we're watching Spy Kids 4 all the time in the world. A retired spy is called back into action and to bond with her new stepchildren, she invites them along for the adventure to stop the evil timekeeper from taking over the world. Let's watch. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Wow, guys, <laughs> look who's turned up for the recording tonight. Well, 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 guess well, they let anyone in here. Well. Look who's come crawling back, eh? Yeah. Blow at me. <laughs> I'm really just doing the hitcher. Trouble walked in. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Gaden Souza. I'm back. The fourth junior. A friend so old, junior. who cares? Yeah. yeah. No, I always care. Do you or hey, I care too. Honored, honored friend... Wife, husband, mm-hmm. child, child. <laughs> aunt, uncle of the podcast. Yeah. But not a guest. What, what number of appearance is this at this point? Certainly more than one. I'd certainly. Maybe more than two. It's definitely more than one or two. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What are we at? Four? Yeah. Five? Four, five. I How have you grown in that out. time, Gaden? Um, How much have you finally gotten up. tall? I haven't finally gotten tall. Still remain a short king. Mm. Um, you get knee surgery. I could. Yeah. yeah. That, it sounds truly awful. It the sounds fact horrible. That people do that. <laughs> it is. They break their legs apart and get more bone put in. So many right? bizarre things that we do it's to try and change the, the the course of nature. Yeah. You are what you are. Yeah. It's fine. It's hey, okay. well, I I don't know if I'm a believer in you are what you are. Oh yeah. Well, if I'm going to be perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> but but <laughs> when it comes to needing to get you know new bone put in to be taller, I don't know. A bit, a bit wild. A bit wild. Um, Just I'd wild. love to get some bone put in. Where? Are we back to horny, Michelle? Yeah, again? my pussy, my <laughs> pussy, in my little pussy. My pussy. My- I'm so glad my mom my listens to these yeah. episodes. Oh fuck, that's right. <laughs> censor right. it. Censor it. Censor it. My <laughs> pussy. <laughs> what? Sing it. My <laughs> pussy. Not, she can't hear it. No, she can't hear it. Is that my just- pussy. <laughs> you know, as you get older, you can't hear above like yeah. a certain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're cutting it up. <laughs> Only for the Gen Z is that one. Uh, so if you're just, if this is your first episode. Um. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate and I'm a filmmaker. I make films. I write direct things. I work with Abby. We write together. We've made things together. That's why I'm here. If you've not heard me on the podcast before. Uh, I have, yeah. So I have a good interest in kids. I'm a Sagittarius. Right. And do you align with that? I actually do, yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you feel like you've got a lot of Sagittarius? I think I've got a lot of Sagittarius. I'm a cusp mm. baby. Oh. Cuspy, yeah. little Sagittarius cuspy. Capricorn. Right. But I, I think I identify more as a Sagittarius. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, yeah. there is something to be said. I'm a Gemini. And mm. when they tried to tell me that there was a 13th sign and I was actually a Taurus, no. I was like, I am not grounded <laughs> no, enough. No, thank you. <laughs> no. Okay, okay, wait, wait. She I've is got, not me. I've got the answer for how many appearances. I went to our website and I searched your name. Oh, nice. But before, I want you guys to guess, but before, I want to know, are we counting the room part one and two as two separate appearances? Yes. Yes? Why not? Okay. It's two sure. episodes. All right. In that case, how many do, times do you think Gaden's been on oh, the podcast? Oh, actually, well, you hosted the podcast. Yeah, I also forgot I was on the room episodes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Until right now. We recorded that on my birthday. So I'm going to say eight, and so this will be the ninth. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say seven, and this is the eighth. Gaten is correct. Oh. You've appeared seven times. Spy Kids 3D Game Over, which is why you're back today. That's why I'm here. Mm-hmm. The Last Airbender, Recep Ivedic 3, which you co-hosted. Awful. One Missed Call, which you co-hosted. Fun. Anything But the Human Centipede 2, mm. and then The Room Part 1 and 2. Yeah. I'm so glad I was away for those films <laughs> when I was on my honeymoon. I think Man. you would have liked One Missed one Call. Missed oh, call yeah, was yeah. actually fine. Just the Recep Ivedic. That, oh. was, yeah. worth, that was worth the honeymoon. Oh. I actually booked the honeymoon around not having to watch. <laughs> you <laughs> looked Recep at what Ivedic. was coming. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yeah. yeah. No. If anything, Fully. I think I'm still a little angry and resentful that you didn't have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> truly, what truly. Can, what can I do to make it up to you in this relationship? What can I, I don't do? have to watch Richard Bivedic Five. Actually, that's a pretty. <laughs> no, but we shouldn't make Gaden watch it. <laughs> no, guys. No, guys. I'd do it. Would you? <laughs> I'd do it. To save I'd Michelle. So do it. Oh my god, Michelle would have For one episode bit? off. Wait, and it would I be could Richard... take a week off. For yeah. The bit, I'd oh do my it. god. Although, who's going to edit? Oh, we'll come to that. I'll still edit it. I'll still edit it. It'd be fun. It's like listening to your friends. Yeah. yeah that's right. It's like it's like when I'm at a party and then I'm a little overwhelmed and then I just kind of zone out and mm. it's like listening to your friends be a podcast. Mm. We just spend the whole time being like, Michelle needs an intervention. That's a conversation. Yeah, we would. She's trying to get new bone put into her knees. She needs 
of intervention. She, she can't be any taller. She's, <laughs> she's already so doesn't tall. Doesn't need the height. Hey, guys. <laughs> oh How's God. it hanging? Whoa. Sorry, I'm just learning how to balance on my huge... Le- I've only put bone in my legs. <laughs> I look like a circus like guy on stilts. stilts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, take me back to the era of stilts, and then when you hide it under, <laughs> when you hide it under like big floppy thirties pants, and you're like, the Come floppy thirties pants, yeah, are fun. yeah, they are very like funny. wide, nice woolen pants. Yeah. But yeah. then you've got stilts underneath. Yeah, yeah. take me back. Take me back. <laughs> where, where, why don't we do that anymore? Where are the stilt guys? Ah, uh, bring me back to the stilt guys. They're all probably just doing NFTs now. They're probably dead. They are probably, probably dead. Yeah. yeah, I think, but I think, I think it's a craft that can be passed down. I don't think it was just one set of guys. You can learn how to stilt. You can. I'm just saying the stilt guy archetype, I think they got into NFTs. Well, yeah. And what I'm saying is that we don't have enough of the traditional circus archetypes left just loose in the world. Mm, that's you know? true. To clown is a very specific thing. <laughs> it is. It's very, very specific. It is. I have yes. a friend who has two friends who are professional jugglers. Oh, that's and what I'm talking wait, about. Wait, sorry. You have two Bring friends back. who are professional no, jugglers? I have one friend who has two friends who are professional jugglers. Gaiden doesn't have Still, two friends. I, I don't I don't think in my circle I'm one Kevin Bacon yeah, removed no. from... <laughs> it's, it's it's Sam. <laughs> virtual friend of Michelle and I who scored our last two movies. Okay, he would together. know two jugglers. He, yeah, he did sure. a project with two jugglers. In that case, I do know one guy who <laughs> you do. Who knows two jugglers. Yeah, you're okay. one Kevin Bacon away from jugglers. <laughs> professional jugglers. Yeah. yeah. Look, everyone yeah. might deep down know a guy that knows two jugglers. Oh, you know who else? Deep also, down. You know who else juggles? This is not going to be surprising to you too. Torsten. Of course he does. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Very, I see really it for him. Surprising. Yeah. Well, Torsten is the kind of guy. He collected stopwatches, right? As a not stopwatches, just old pocket watches. Yeah, he's done a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, he's he's a he's a magical little fairy man. Well, guys, I would encourage you, who are, like listeners, to email us at ratingdescending at gmail dot com if you know a guy that knows two jugglers. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. If you know two jugglers, just know that you are the guy, and we don't want your email. <laughs> <laughs> we want your friend's email. What if we want to get in touch? one of the listeners is a juggler. Even is that better. like that's like the dream scenario? Even right? better, I yeah. would love to yeah. know firsthand a juggler. Yeah. Mm. I don't want to know a guy who knows two jugglers. I want to know a guy who knows a guy who knows two jugglers, or I want to know two jugglers. You know how there were just things that you thought would be more frequent in your life, like meeting people that could juggle. When you were a kid, you thought you'd meet people that could juggle, and yeah. you grow up and you're like, no I one feel juggles. like people used to demonstrate whether or not they could juggle all the all time. All the time. Now I have, n- I go I around and I never know. Never it's meet never a coming out at parties. There's so many yeah. things I think that when you're a kid, you expect to encounter as an adult, and Quick you never sand. do. Quicksand is famous, like the famous, classic. Famous, famous I expected everyone could yo-yo a lot more when I was a <laughs> yes, kid. Yes. Yeah. No one yo-yos. It's rare that it comes up whether or not I can yo-yo. <laughs> no one pulls out a yo-yo these days. Dance battles. Should. Dance battles. That, that yep. more tension would be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I always uh, thought that was silly. Out that way. <laughs> <laughs> you thought that's how people worked out the yeah, tension. Yeah, the difference. I thought more I people that. would turn up on my doorstep unannounced. Oh, yeah, I totally. really thought people would just turn yeah. up. I thought bars were better lit and quieter for fully, sure. Fully. I thought they'd be much more pleasant. I thought I have a lot have more money to yeah. spend at bars. Like I could afford it every night. Oh yeah, well, thought yeah. that would be a reality. I was like a bottle of beer and some peanuts. Can't afford it. Not in I this think, society. I think we're going to make the decision now to pull up or we're going to get into a nosedive. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, no, <laughs> to, just, to, to we're, now we're just going like, I had dreams and hopes when I was a kid <laughs> that things would be well, livable. To pivot, I'm obviously here to talk about Spy Kids 4, but I'm also here to defend Cars uh, oh my as God. the most featured guest on the show. God damn it. I am here to, to personally stake in a public forum. Thank you. Cars is good, actually. I'm staring Michelle down. Gosh. I rewatched it recently. It's a very charming film with it a is. good theme. It looks great. The racing is exciting. It does look good. It does look perfectly still holds up. fine. Great voice actors. Great voice Paul acting. Paul Newman. Isn't it right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He like plays the the older yeah. aged car. Yeah, Doc, right? Doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great movie. It's, it's perfectly fantastic. fine. I just think to call it fine is an insult. It is because it's more it's than better fine. than fine. I don't care for it. I don't have to care for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying you don't have to care for it. But I think you were trying to say. I think objectively, you do think I have to care for it. <laughs> I feel like the whole argument was always objectively like cars wasn't that good. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think to call it fine what, is the what insult. I, what I don't understand is the furor around it. If I imply it's anything other than incredible, I have received enormous backlash. And I think that's ridiculous. It's a movie that I'm definitely allowed to think is okay. What we don't understand is that you don't seem to talk about, you don't seem to see the charm in it. I, 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 I intellectually get the charm in it. 
I don't find it particularly charming outside of some like I like was you, it Luigi or Guido or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> where are you going with this, Michelle? The little car. Yeah. We talked about him. I think Luigi he's, and Guido. Oh, yeah. Luigi and Guido. They're so good. Yeah, yeah they're great. They're so funny. He's a, he's a they're fun so little cute. guy. Yeah. yeah. He's great. I, I see the charm in him. I don't care about small towns. I'm a city girl through and through. <laughs> So the charm bounces off me. Look, you can't intellectualize something that's charming. If you say intellectually I get it, but it didn't charm me, you weren't charmed. Yeah. That's you exactly what I'm saying. I'm just not negating that it has charm. Because <laughs> because then it, that I will apparently be committing a crime. So you understand how it could appeal to some people, yeah. just not to yourself. Yes. Whereas initially I felt like the argument was Cars wasn't that good. I'm saying it doesn't deserve the the hardcore defense that it's getting in this room it or does, in previous rooms I've been in. It does because people truly enjoy it. They can truly enjoy it. I'm just saying it gets treated as if it's a, a fucking like landmark of cinema, of which it is not. I would love to know really where your opinion lies on this because it's going all over the place. I think it's one of the weakest of the first initial like era of Pixar, which I think we can agree probably ended after Up. I think of that lineup up until 2009, I think it is, in my opinion, at least one of the weaker. Is Wally before Up? I thought it was. Yeah, I think it. I think it's oh, eight. Right. Yeah, yeah. When's Wally was great. Nine. Nine. Yeah, Wally's great. They made a movie. Wally's great. I think I think Up would be the weakest if it wasn't for the first ten minutes. I think the entire rest of the movie is The rest of the movie sucks. It's just not as interesting. Sorry. (laughs) Happy, why are you doing why are you doing this right now? (laughs) My lips are dry. Does anyone want a bunch of purple cream? It's really nice. (laughs) It's good for your skin. Get a lot. (laughs) No, thank you. It's great for your skin. I'm busy. Good for your lips. I'm busy. It doesn't take long. What are you busy doing? I'm busy. It won't take long. It won't take long to put your lips. No, but but I hate it. I I hate when there's things on my lips. I don't like wearing lipstick for that reason. He wants a lip balm. I'm busy. <laughs> we're recording. I don't want to put something in my mouth That's right fine. now. Ready? I just put Bonjella on the ulcer in my mouth while we're recording. Oh, it's so fine. much more boring. <laughs> 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 oh, Abby, you look like you tried to eat it like you were a five-year-old. I'm just going to leave it. I had a cold, so it's all dry anyway. No, but this just is ignore it. <laughs> look at how much we're not doing the podcast right I wouldn't now. have had to put so much on if you took us so. I don't like it when things are on, sticky things are on my lips. But it's not normally the sticky. Your mouth looks so sticky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally crying. <laughs> It wouldn't have to be like this if you just took some of the bubble cream. I don't like it with sticky things on my lips. <laughs> For sensory reasons. Every time I wear lipstick, I start wiping it off because I just don't more. like it. You have so much on your mouth in the store. I know we talk Please. a lot about how I eat, but have you nev- not Please. ever noticed how much I try Please. really hard to place things look in my mouth? Look how beautifully glossy Gaiden's <laughs> lips look. You know, that's how it's meant to be. Abby, you look wet. <laughs> I feel wet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Put some on your hands. Your hands yeah. will be dry because it's Don't cold. Put more, just get it from your mouth. <laughs> there's still no, more. there's still more on the outside of the thing. We're in the middle of talking oh and you just pulled it out and squid it out oh, so much. Fuck me. <laughs> it's usually really cold, so it's hard to squid out, but it's really warm. In my now pocket. you look like you just walked out of a bug. <laughs> It'll absorb. <laughs> leave it. I'll just leave it. What's your segue? What's your segue? Oh, yeah. It? <laughs> much like Abby's lips, you know what else is I'm going to have to figure out how much of that tequila. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's no segue. Just put it at the end. Just put it at the end. Just put it at the end. The dedicated listener. So well, now that that's completely irreparable, <laughs> this week we watch Spy Kids 4 <laughs> All the Time in the World. <laughs> <laughs> My lips are coated. <laughs> They're so. They're so. Do you want me to like rub it in? Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's not even just your lips. It's also the area around your lips. That <laughs> well, looks it's all so very wet. dry, so I need it. Sure. I've been I, I applying didn't. constantly, oh, but um, <laughs> I really genuinely don't like it when my lips are sticky. Do you not like seeing how sticky my lips are? <laughs> Is that ma- also adding to your sensory <laughs> issues? It does make me a little uncomfortable, but uh, I like I can get through it. How are my lips doing? Yours look great. You 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 look hard as hell, man. Great. Spike it's four. Yeah, Spike it's four. All right. All right. Immediate first impressions, guys. Um, look, maybe it's the fact that I mean. My first impressions are divided in two. No, that's not what first impressions are. Fun time. 
<laughs> Did you just pull yourself out of doing a Michelle? Yes. Right then and there? Because, because everyone comments on it, which means I assume they don't like it. So no, I'm trying to... That's I'm just trying how to, you are. Oh, thanks. What okay. two sections of well, your, in that case, of your there, first There's two reactions. One, maybe it's just because of the list, but like... This is one of those movies that's a lot lower than I think it needs to be because I had a way more yes. fun time with this than some of the other things. Same, fully. What about you guys? Okay, guys, I've been on here for seven episodes. Most of the time, I'm ranking things a lot lower than you, and I'm like, you guys are insane. Your your brains have been melted through the process of watching too many of these movies. Yeah. This movie's pretty fun. Yeah, it's pretty this, fun. This movie's <laughs> pretty like fun. It's, yeah. Like, it's bad. It's but not bad. good. No. But, like, also weirdly thematically consistent. Yeah. Very thematically In a way consistent. that I'm like, that actually gives it a lot of, yeah. a lot of heft. Yeah, I love a, a lot of movies. I that think you guys some have of the watched. characters are quite likable. Yeah, and also, so Michelle and I have watched this before. I don't know if you've seen it before. I've never seen. I'm it kind before. of obsessed with this. Movie. We watched this. Why did we watch this? We watched it. We watched it with our old friends Julian and Lauren. Yeah, no longer with back us. when Sorry. we. <laughs> Rest in peace. <laughs> they are alive. Um, we watched it with them because at that time we had like a little movie watching circle and we liked watching bad movies. That yeah. was like the proto let's watch bad movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we watched it. So that what? When was that? Like ten years ago? Did we watch it? Yeah, it would have been like ago? eight. With, to this. If it was with Julie and Lauren, it would have been. Oh my god! Yeah, probably it would have been like maybe nine or nine ten or years 10. ago. That's crazy. Oh my god! <laughs> my face is so wet. <laughs> it is. It is really, really wet. Mary. It's really, really wet. <laughs> Whatever the level below sopping is, <laughs> that's how wet your mouth is. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had this much pore pore cream on me. Um, you're, you're a bit like a frog who just came out of a stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's how Claude describes me. <laughs> when he's talking dirty to you. You're going yeah. yeah. to get home and he's going to be like, oh, I didn't know we were doing Shape of Water tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah. Well, yeah, we watched it like nine years ago, eight yeah. years ago, maybe. And, but uh, more than once because I think we watched it and then showed it to other people. I feel like we watched I feel like there's part of me that thinks that we caught the last half of it and we were like we have to watch this again <laughs> yeah that sounds something right. like that but it we used to play on network television a lot like did I, it? I remember it being on go a lot that mm. channel which i don't know if it's still on because i don't have network television anymore but it used to be on like those channels a lot i yeah. remember seeing ads for it all the time because i just remember joel McHale's face and going oh it's the community guy yeah yeah and, like, when we first saw it, we were like, this is crazy. And we loved it because, we, ke- as we kept describing it, there's so many Jeremy Pivens. Yeah. <laughs> and one is already too many. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's so many. I think that's the reason we've been obsessed with it, is just the Fully. sheer volume of Jeremy Pivens. And then we have always been excited to come back to this one because we've seen it before and we've loved it. And we did Spy Kids 3 with Gaiden. And now we're here at the... Yeah. Worse. At the at the at one that's supposedly even worse, but I it's think not. it's not. I don't think it is. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I was running Spy Kids three through my head, and I was like, no, it doesn't even doesn't even hold a candle. Yeah, yeah. To to this movie, honestly, I feel like I, this is worse than Spy Kids three. No, easy. This is nah. worse. Spy Kids three at least had less than like every second line in this, they have to say the word time. I guess contractually, and by the end of the movie, I was actively out loud saying stop. <laughs> I don't know where I stand. I kind of like it. <laughs> oh my I like God. the time thing. It's, too, it's, it's a little much. I think if it, if it was 50% as much, it would still be a little much. <laughs> I don't know where I stand. I'm, I'm, I don't know what's better or time. worse. No, just oh, between three and four. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't know which one I like more, but I do enjoy this one a lot. I think I hated how much what Spy Kids 3 looked like so much. Mm. It was such an assault to my mm. to my eyeballs. This is an assault to the eyeballs. I don't it's think it looks less, as bad. Yeah, I don't it's think it looks that bad. It's a bit more realistic. And I think it... I That's think crazy. It, I think genuinely it looks... It's lit like a nicer. network sitcom that then becomes a video game level. Like, but it's, it's not as it's colourful insane. as the previous ones. Like the weird time... <laughs> Dimension. <laughs> yeah. They do go to a weird time dimension yeah. that is meant to just be like it's a very, building. It's the just watch lots shop. of blues and steampunky vibes, <laughs> yeah. which are fine. They're not as like weird and loud and colorful as the previous ones. Sure. But I will say, so this film, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. And I love the fact that I actually like Jessica Alba in this a lot. I actually think her character is quite likable because yeah. she's just a stepmom that wants her stepkids to I, like her. I think she sells the childish corniness because notably the kids are younger, the new kids are younger, and yeah. I feel like that is part of an overall shift to aim this. I feel like the older one, the other, the first three are aimed at, I don't know, eight to 14-year-olds, and this feels like it's aimed at seven, eight-year-olds. It does feel like it skews slightly mm. younger because it's a little more cartoonish, it's a little more openly silly in that way without mm. trying to have the the same sort of plot elements 
And Jessica Alba really knows how to play into that well. You know who wasn't great, in my opinion, was Joel McHale. Yeah, he's, he's, not, he's bad. He's, he's bad. He's not good. He's not great. He's not lead community, movies. but he's not. He's, not, he's never been good in any movie I've ever there's, seen. There's a bit. Yeah, I know he because he is good in Community, genuinely, he is. and he's funny in that. Yeah, it's just it's just there's a bit towards the third act where he and Jessica Alba have a fight, and Jessica Alba's Whoa. giving it so hard. She's mm. like fully in tears. She's and good giving, in this movie. He's mm. giving that scene nothing. Yeah, absolutely nothing, and it feels like it's maybe a character choice, but it doesn't work. <laughs> at all in which yeah. case I'm like bad choice but do you think that's just because and like he is great in community but also in community he is fundamentally playing like a version of himself mm, he potentially is a very like uh smarmy snarky guy like that's why he gets a lot of those roles and I think asking him to stretch that yeah. is clearly a lot yeah, fully. It's like he doesn't know how to tuck that behind him and just yeah. play like a guy that might be nicer. Like mm. I feel like this character, the dad is not supposed to be cocky or smarmy. And so maybe he's like, I don't really know how to play that. He feels <laughs> at his least that. sincere when he's declaring his love for I Jessica know. Alba. Which <laughs> I mean, I think especially when you compare it to like having someone like Antonio Banderas. <laughs> yeah. The charisma. <laughs> yeah. The just charisma. In yeah, and that first family, like the initial family in Spy Kids, the all Cortezes. of them are charismatic. All of them are like play really well with each other. They have this beautiful home by the sea, which I always loved as well. Mm. I just, it's hard to hold a candle. But Claude is sick at the moment, so he's kind of like sooky. And today I was like, I have to watch Spy Kids for. And he was like, oh, can I watch it with you? And so we watched it together, and it was such a good experience watching it with someone because it really highlighted how fucking crazy <laughs> this film is. Yeah. <laughs> and all of the questions I have about the characters and the motivations. But, I mean, let's go into some key details and nice. I'll do the overview and then we'll talk about it. Hell yeah. This film uh, was made in 2011 and it has 3.5 stars on IMDb. Uh, it was written and directed by Robert Rodriguez, who did the first and second Spike and the third Spy Kids. Which is one of those things that is both surprising and not surprising. Like, he's a good director, and then also I see a bunch of his movies, and I'm like, is he? But he's great. He also, I, I don't know, his, like, videos are what, like, taught me originally when I was a teenager. He, he made videos of, like, how to make movies and stuff. He's a very influential figure who really can, like, hold it together when he's got it going. Mm. And I think he knows what this is. Yeah. He certainly knows what it is. I think know? he knows that, according to some of the information I found, that he had to make this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, this film stars Jessica Alba, Joel McHale, Alexa Vega, um, Daryl Sabara, Rowan Blanchard, Mason Cook, Ricky Gervais, and Jeremy Piven. Oh my god, when Ricky Gervais showed up, I literally just wrote down, ew. I, yeah, I, I forgot notes, about him. My notes were, it loses a full star. Yeah. <laughs> just, because of Jer just hearing his Ricky voice, Gervais? I'm like, down. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, not only just because of his general whole shtick nowadays and transphobia, but also his performance what's, sucks what's the his energy out. What's nowadays? Oh, he's very much a, like, I just say it how it is kind of comedian. If you yeah. get offended, usually... that's your fault. Yeah. What's I'm here he... to say jokes. It's all just jokes. What's he done that's transphobic? I'm out of the loop. A, lo a, a bunch of his jokes in more recent specials are just punching down on trans people. And then under the guise of, like, I'm just trying to tell it how it is and stuff, you know. Oh, oh, have shit. a laugh. It's very much that, like, like a bully. Like a, like the kids who bullied me in high school. They're yeah. like, oh, just have a laugh about but, it. But also they're like, have a laugh. I'm just saying, and it's like, but you, you do believe that this is a target worth punching. Mm. As opposed to just like, I'm making a joke in bad taste. It's like... No, he's he's genuinely picking a target he thinks is silly in his mind. What What's he said? What have the jokes been? Uh, if I... If I keep memorizing that kind of like what Ricky Gervais and J.K. Rowling and Dave Chappelle if I memorize what they say I go insane you yeah. know I need to actively try and not think about the things that these horrid people have said that's what I I've do with this them. podcast <laughs> it's like I have to erase to preserve yeah my strength my happiness well, yeah I clearly forgot it's that like I was that. in the room so I'm yeah. doing the same thing <laughs> Well, this film was made for $27 million. Wow. Which is the cheapest of the Spy Kids films to be made. No, it shows. How? Yeah, well, how much <laughs> do you think it made? I think given how much I remember hearing about the first three. And, like, yeah, sure, 2011, I was in high school. But also because of my sister, I was not out of the loop with movies aimed at a much younger audience, right? I don't think it did well. Is my prediction, mm. but I don't think it necessarily bombed in that same way. We were like, we made half. I'm gonna say twenty million. 
30. More. Whoa. Mm. Yeah, it actually didn't it didn't 60? commercially flop more. <gasps> 80? 85 million. 85? Yeah. That's pretty decent. Yeah, it's decent. Cool, that's ass. nuts that's so decent. Yeah. I, I will say, I said earlier that the thematic is kind of like, the theme is actually quite strong. I do think it would appeal to families. Yeah, for sure. Like, for sure. Even without the like spy kids of it all, I think yeah. it, it being a movie about like, I want to have more time with my children and my mm. family. If I was like, like 10, I would have watched this yeah, many times. so many I mean, times. I think Jessica Alba was a real draw as well. Like, she's, she's a really proper, she's an it. A-lister. Yeah. So I think, I think she really brought people in. Definitely. I think this is better than Zoom, another yeah. movie that feels similar in the way that it's aimed at the same audience. This is better than Zoom. Zoom is one I purged from my memory entirely. <laughs> yeah, I until this moment Zoom I forgot about is. it. <laughs> well, you can find uh, us talking about it on uh, Rating Descending. You can find us on uh, TikTok. Oh, we day. have yeah. YouTube <laughs> now. Interesting. You can uh, find us at Rating Descending on YouTube. They're, they're descending on me. They're, they're you know, coming for me. We also really have a website. Make a difference, <laughs> make a difference <laughs> Gaiden. Make a difference. I have to review. Oh. Hell yeah. Here's the overview. <clears throat> <laughs> Marissa is a stepmom to two kids, Rebecca and Cecil. Uh, or Cecil. Do they say Cecil or Cecil? I think they kept saying Cecil. Yeah. yeah. They kept saying Cecil. Which, yeah. which I always find it is uh, an awkward pronunciation of mm. of the name. Yeah, it's like how Americans say basil yeah. instead yeah. of basil. Basil. Basil's faster. Like the Americans say like Cecil's the most faster. roundabout yeah. way. Yeah, anyway. Cecil. You don't have to enunciate that much, you know? Cecil. Also, I did hear that, Susan. I did fucking hear that. I did it for you. You don't think it... I, did, I actually don't did it think it'll slip I want Abby to be proud of me. Oh, I'm so proud of you, baby. Thank you. That's my, that's my boy. <laughs> my, my son. My boy. <laughs> Rebecca. I've abandoned my day. <laughs> I've abandoned my them. <laughs> Rebecca and C- Cecil and a new mother. Okay, I'm going to start again. Yeah, yeah. Marissa is a stepmom to two kids, Rebecca and Cecil, and a new mother to a child with her husband, Wil- Wilbur, a spy hunter. <laughs> By the way, the baby, did we ever hear the baby's name? Because they kept just calling it nope, baby. they just call it the baby. And then they, they call it call spy it baby. baby. They also baby. just keep calling the mom stepmom for a yeah. while as well. Yeah. Um, spy baby. Little does Wilbur the spy hunter. <laughs> come back to spy baby. We get to it. I've got notes. <laughs> little does Wilbur the spy hunter. No, so I was going to say spy baby. <laughs> little does Wilbur the spy hunter know that Marissa is in fact a spy. <gasps> she tries to connect with prank loving Rebecca by giving her a red sapphire necklace. But a villain called the Timekeeper begins to speed up. Lots of question marks begin here. <laughs> speed up time through something called the Armageddon device, yeah, no and sense. he needs the sapphire. <laughs> Rebecca yeah. and Cecil yeah. have to escape from evil henchmen who have GPS tracked the necklace. Uh-huh. <laughs> they go. Yeah, yeah. They go to the OSS headquarters <laughs> where they meet Marissa's niece. Carmen Cortez. Mm-hmm. The kids go after the timekeeper, well, but are trapped. Step niece. <laughs> step niece. Because because Marissa. Wait, they just call her the niece in the movie. Yeah, but what? Wait, because well, the kids meet Carmen Cortez first. Yeah. So the oh, you're right, and Marissa's niece. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're step cousins. I don't think it matters. I don't think they're cousins. I just call my cousins if my cousins who are step cousins. Mom. Oh uh, yeah, step cousins. Maybe step cousins. <laughs> I guess so. I don't think we get that granular with it, though, do we? What do you mean? I don't know. This podcast is about getting granular. The details. Yeah. yeah you're I, right. I have, well, I have step-siblings, but they would be, if it was that yeah. time, it would be step-cousins. Yeah, 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 yeah. I would, in in common parlance, just call them cousins. Same, but, same. Well, why don't we write to Robert Rodriguez and point that out to him? <laughs> uh, the kids go after the timekeeper, but are tra- trapped by TikTok, who is also like another villain played by Jeremy Piven? Well, then that's the reveal. Thank I, you yeah, very much. Well, then <laughs> you can't even again. tell. Ah, you Whoa. can't tell. <laughs> Wilbur realizes that Marissa is a spy and is like super upset about it for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be fucking cool if I found out Claude was a pretty spy. Pretty sick. Pretty sick. Also, why does he want to hunt them? We'll talk about that. But then Fame. also. As a note, Junie rocks up, That's, <laughs> and there's yeah, a yeah. whole and thing he's with like him and gone Carmen for a while. A- and there's tension with him and Carmen. Question mark. Qu- question mark. Question mark. The kids realize Marissa's boss, Danger Diamo, is the timekeeper. <laughs> Uh, Danger reveals the Armageddon device was created to travel back in time so he could spend more time with his dead father. That's to really t- TLDR it. Yeah. Um, Cecil deduces that Danger has already tried this multiple times, but he comes back wor- worse each time. 
He reveals Bless. that TikTok and his minions are all versions of himself. Something that he apparently couldn't tell. I yeah. thought he was in on it, but he apparently didn't know. <laughs> Rebecca tells Danger he should use what time he has wisely instead of trying to acquire more. That's the theme. He goes into the vortex and comes back having met his father, but he realizes that Cecil was right and that he shouldn't have done it. Uh, he shuts down the device, the Armageddon device, and TikTok is apprehended. Everyone is happy. Yay, yay, yay. The end. That's Spy it. baby. Yay, yay, Spy yay. baby. Spy baby. Any questions? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> should, should they be chronological or just... We won't be uh, taking questions at this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the president is tired. <laughs> He's so, sorry. We're sorry, wrapping sorry. this up. I've been watching a lot of West Wing. Oh, sure. Oh, you're on a, on a West Wing rewatch? I've always been a... Yeah, I mean, I love West Wing, but I am on a West Wing rewatch. Mm, I gotta, I, I've it. never seen it. It's so good. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta. Let me say this to convince you to watch it. I don't need to convince you. Na, 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 I don't know. Have you seen the West Wing? I don't watch that shit. No. <laughs> Liberal clap chat. <laughs> she's pretty nice. She's pretty good singer. You are a pretty good singer, Abby. Uh, yeah. She shows enough all the time. And she does show enough all the time. Your mum was right. Oh, that's a little pitchy. That's a little pitchy. You could just be an opera singer. Yeah, she's come back. She's she's come back. Abigail. And think about presidents. Yeah. Okay. While that happens. Just presidents. Just the the presidents. glory of the American nation. Makes you hopeful again. And isn't it like all Sorkin things, what if uh, this fundamental thing that doesn't work very well actually did a good job? Yes. I can't criticize the West Wing because I'm someone who unironically loves the newsroom. Which I don't get. I like it. I, I, I unironically like the newsroom. I, I tried like to like it with Michelle. Yeah. It's I cool. liked the first season a bit. But there were so many bits that actually just made me cringe and lose faith in Aaron Sorkin. The everything about Mac and Will was annoying. The bit where they're Mac getting engaged really annoyed you. I remember so much. It annoys you so much. She's not realistic, and like the sentimentality of the newsroom. That don't get me wrong. The sentimentality in the West Wing, but the saccharine sentimentality of the newsroom was too much to bear. The storyline between Allison Pill and Jim was fucking annoying as oh, well. I liked that one. All of the all of the romance was, was Jim badly Pill, done. Jim, Jim Harper, Jim Halpert. I was J- Jim H all day. Also, Will's not likable, whereas the guys in the West Wing are smart and smug, but they also get taken down on like a notch all the time, and they actually are likable people. I found Will really difficult but to Jeff like. Jeff Daniels is so good. Yeah, yeah he's good. He's so but you good. haven't watched The West Wing. You I haven't seen I fucking haven't. Brad How's Whit- Jeff Whitford. Daniels in that? <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere to be found. But well, Bradley Whitford. Like something and Rob could have been great. Rob Lowe is yeah. fantastic as Sam Seaborn. And also Martin Sheen as Jeb Bartlett. Oh. Oh. It's crazy that we're talking about the West Wing Spy right now. Spy Kids 4. Instead of Spy Kids 4. Okay, There's so anyway. much to get through with Spy Kids 4. There is so much to get through with Spy Kids 4. Mm-hmm. Okay, because we were obsessed with Spy Baby, I do want to specifically put, just highlight a moment, which was my favorite, where they were like, what do we do with the baby? And then it, I'm pretty sure it was Cecil just like goes like, Spy Kids Spy dog. He's just pointing at the thing. Spy she dog? Says, spy mum. Spy mum. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's, it's her. That's it's right. <laughs> spy mum. <laughs> spy kids. <laughs> spy dog. Spy, spy baby. baby as the answer <laughs> to what we do. Yeah, and no and further just go, questions. Okay. <laughs> That's what I lo- I couldn't get over. It. Look, I honestly wanted to talk at length about the Joel McHale character <laughs> yeah. because what I don't understand is that he's a spy hunter. Yeah. Firstly, which spy wronged him? Why does he feel the need to hunt them? Because it sounds like they're doing society which a service. Spy wronged him. Also, like weird that like What's, spies were so out in the open. Well, in here's this- my. Here's my theory. Well, Have you seen how they operate? Yeah, yeah, they're not good spies. This is my theory. Joel McHale's first wife died, the mother of his children. Yeah. And Jessica Al was the stepmother. What if his ex-wife was killed by, by a, a spy? spy? It's it's important to note, Abby, he's not a spy hunter at the beginning of the movie. He is just a TV journalist. How does he have a TV show about being he, a spy hunter? He, we hear him... He, he, he's like, I've come up with a new idea in the first scene when she's pregnant, which also the bit where Danger Diamo on the phone is like, but you forgot one tiny detail. You're pregnant. Yeah. And cut out to <laughs> she's pregnant. Incredible. <laughs> but he on the phone is like, I've got a pitch yeah. for a new show that'll really work. It's called Spy Hunter, mm. where I hunt spies. And then, of course, at the end of that sequence, we cut forward like nine months or a year but or he whatever. But call- he's never called a spy. Why would it? It's like me saying, I know, I'll make a cooking show, but I don't cook. Well, no, no, but this is the thing. He's like, I will go hunt spies. Now they're making season one. He, but he is unable to catch 
catch a spy. That's his season? conflict. How did he get a season? Because he's, TV? A, I guess he's a successful TV journalist who can pitch to producers. What was his previous show? Was he doing something else? Now to that be able I would get... like to know. Yeah. Well, like, how did they put so much trust in him to have this show when he's never caught a spy? Maybe, Ow. maybe he's caught a killer. <laughs> Do you think? Oh, my glutes. You know what I found weird about him? What? He really doesn't care about his baby. No. Did you guys notice that? At one point, he really cares about his kids and not his new kid. Well, that's point, mum shit. He kissed the new baby. Like, at one point, <laughs> he was like, hey, baby. That was it. That's that was, it. like, the he one says, hey, interaction. Hey, baby. Yeah. That's it. Well, so, it's like, weird. I mean, it's still his baby. Yeah, he doesn't do shit either, though. It's yeah, I know, absent. but I think that's just dad stuff. I he's, think that's just classic American dad. Also, like, his relationship with <laughs> yeah. Jessica Alba, they're not as close as they should be. No. Like, when they're, like, leaving for work and she's got to stay in and he won't hug her or kiss her goodbye, I'm like, where's the affection, Yeah, guys? but that's like when you watch Community and John McHale doesn't quite have the right chemistry with Britta or Annie. Yeah. I just don't, he just doesn't, he just, he's too focused on himself. Mm. I think it's the same thing. Yeah, probably. That's my theory. I will say the reason he doesn't kiss her is that she has stuff all yeah. over her. I don't like how much stuff gets on people in this movie. <laughs> uh, but that's <laughs> such slime. classic kid care stuff. For it. There's got to be slime on stuff. Well, you know how we need to bring back stilts? I don't like it either. I don't like it. we got to bring back slime. No. Nickelodeon Less never slime. let go of slime. Which fucking LA creep proposed, what exec proposed, let slime teenagers on air? I think. I think we know the answer from the recent documentary <laughs> no, about I Nickelodeon. Think, I do think that one is not a Dan Schneider thing. It's just the kids like slime. Yeah, but... It's gooey and I just, sticky. D- I, just, I hate it. When I was a kid, I didn't like slime. I didn't like it either. And I think it also is this weird thing in lots of kids' media where we have to make things like yucky and gross. And I'm like, yeah. you know, like lots of kids don't... They don't need to like yeah. this. We can make but stuff that's more elevated. It makes me think of there also fun. used to be an era where like food was depicted as sort of brightly colored slop. Yeah. I think about in Hook when they have the, yeah. the feast, and it's just this sort it's of like Play-Doh. It's yeah, <laughs> it's like throwing across the room. It's, it's wet Play-Doh it that's like bright slop. pink and bright yellow. <laughs> now, and when I was a kid, this? I was like, why doesn't food look like that? <laughs> I want a weird pot of pink shit that I can fling at Peter Pan. Very fast. It's just very fast. It's just muck. Yeah, I love that scene it's though. Just there is something magical about that weird slop though. You gotta, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta have the magic slop. slop. You're, you're talking about Hook, right? Slop yeah. the magic movie. Slop, yeah. Magic slop. <laughs> Yeah, I look. I I don't. There is a lot of slime and a lot of goo going on. Yeah, in this. there's a lot of goo in this. I she, will, the, the little girl makes a lot of slime. And she goo. does make a lot of slime. I will say also on the dad, I, I did write down, I do think John McHale would actually in real life host a show like that. Yeah. What I don't get though is, why is, funny. why is he so upset that she's a spy? Is it just that she was lying about her career? I think or, it's that. Because he's really upset. He's kind of like, I don't want to talk to you, is I th- essentially. I think, it's a, it, I, think it's, I think it's two things. This is my theory. I think it's two things. One is it's the classic, you lied to me. Yeah. People don't like it. Especially American movies depicting straight relationships really hate the concept of lying in a relationship. No matter what the lie is or any of the actual context around it, they hate it. Wait, straight people? I'm just I'm just talking about like the movie archetype. Okay. No, I'm not saying straight people hate lying more than gay people. I'm <laughs> straight not, people I'm not saying hate weird stance, lying. Weird stance to take. Straight yeah. people hate really lies. Gay weird, people love lies. Really weird stance to take. <laughs> <laughs> Just think about the Have archetype. you been lying to everyone thinking it's okay because you're gay? I love it. That's not, that's not okay. <laughs> it's kind of anti-woke to be against lying. <laughs> Just be cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But my, I think the other half of it is his struggle in the movie is feeling like he's not good enough for his kids and his family. And he... Well, he isn't. Well, he isn't. Yeah, but he's a bit. He's a spy hunter who can't find a spy. Turns out there was a spy right under his nose. He feels like he now has proof that he is an abject failure. But why would he take it out on her? In that, like, I that's pretty childish to be like, wow, I can't believe I missed this the whole time. And you wouldn't be like, hey, like... I just wish you'd told me, let's talk about it. He's like, I have to go. Well, he's a baby. He's a child. He's the spy. He is the spy baby. <laughs> Not a fan of him at all in this no, film. I don't no. like Wilbur. He made the least sense to me and I, I had the most Wilbur. questions no, he's, he's about He's the him. worst part. Yeah. Jessica Alba, on the other hand, is actually great. Kind of the best kind part. Of great. It, yeah. What does confuse me is how much he and the people he works with are probably the most actively clued into the concept of time speeding up mm. and how none of them care. Yeah. That's what gets me. Everyone else is like, we're turned into action. But he looks at the news and it's like, time is speeding up and we're running out of time. And he's like, huh. I'm like, you're being told the apocalypse is going on. <laughs> this is what I don't get about the time speeding up, though, is that there's that they bit where he's- They don't get older? 
Well, I there's did, that. I did keep thinking But there's that. also, like, the, the day and the night aren't shifting until that one sequence where yeah. it's, like, time is speeding up and they're showing, <laughs> yeah, like, the day moving throughout time and temperature. and But, like, we don't... And, and, and light. But we don't see that except that one shot. And every other time they're like, don't you get it? It's already Friday. And they've been standing in the same room and nothing's yeah. happened is the it, entire time. It is Friday. It is Friday. Yeah. Well, but so, like, so it should what? have gotten dark. Uh, the sun should have set, I assume, and then it should have risen. If it's not, it means that you were still in the same day. It's just that the timekeepers aren't working properly. Yeah. Therefore, time isn't speeding up, but all the clocks are. Yeah. That's different. It is. It doesn't really mean anything. I guess it's that we're traveling through time, but then you would still travel through distance. Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We can't. We can't. It, it, it doesn't just, matter. It so you know clearly it doesn't matter. It just doesn't work. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> That's all it is. It's like someone didn't actually think it through. No, yeah. crazy. I will say, I think that idea just. I think the whole movie feels like a comic book for children. Yeah, I think that's why it kind of worked for me. Yeah, because mm. it's kind of like it, none of this matters. It's all silly, goofy nonsense. Don't get me wrong. I love the trope of like time stopping. Oh, or dying. Same. It's 100%. great. Very Doctor Who. Very you know? Doctor Who. In in year twelve, in my drama group, we did a group presentation of as course. we always had to in drama. HSC drama. HSC drama. Mm. The group group project. <laughs> well, it's funny. I have a joke about that, but please continue. The GP. Um, but we. HSC Drama? Yeah, you know how they're always just like marriage, and it's like on marriage, and then it's like this weird interpretive dance yeah. thing about the concept of marriage. We were like, "Fuck that! Let's tell a story." And ours was about time stopping, and we nice. were four scientists that had to write the wrongs of humanity to get it to st- like start again. Nice, but in doing so, we just make everything worse, and time explodes. But that that for me like really ticked a lot of little like. I don't mm. know, like boxes I had as Genre-y a seventeen. Boxes. Yeah, that's right. Same. As like a lame Doctor Who Same. obsessed seventeen year old, and this this film kind of does it Same. as well. One hundred percent. My yeah. my joke about Year Twelve, uh, it's literally here. Year Twelve drama performance is the bit where so all of the spies at one point get frozen, and they get frozen through their tags, which. Notably, earlier, Carmen took Junies off yeah. after he appears with like fucking electric guitar sting. That He's the coolest fun. guy in the world. Kind of with fun. everyone, trying I know, to but- fuck every woman he yeah. sees. But it's so much funnier than I think it's supposed to be because Daryl Sabara does not have the capacity to quite pull it off. Oh no, no. God no! Um, but yeah. she she takes off his tag, so he is he pretends to be frozen, and then he kind of snaps out of it, and he's like, "Huh?" And then he steps out in front of everyone, and he starts going like, "Well, why wasn't I frozen? What do I do?" Yeah. And he like his delivery style is very year 12 drama performance <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> that bit reminded me as well not to tell one anecdote after another but that time freezing bit where he's frozen and then he steps out of it when i was five when i was five years old my dad and my brother were home alone with me and they thought it would be really funny to pull a prank while my mom was out <sighs> And they used to do this thing where if you took the battery out of a clock, it would only tick for 30 seconds Mm. and then it would stop. And so they told Uh. me, Abby, Abby, did you hear on the news? The world, time is going to stop today. Everyone's going to freeze at exactly noon. And I was like, oh, my God, what are you going to do? And they were like, we've just got to get ready for it. And Zach was like, go, like, put on whatever you want to wear because you've only got, like, two minutes left. And I, like, ran into mum's, like, wardrobe and I pulled out her dress and her, like, lipstick and I put a hat on and shoes because I wanted to look good when I froze. (laughs) And then I ran back into the living room and then they were just standing there waiting and then it clicked down to, they'd clearly taken it out at, like, 30 seconds to noon and it started slowing down and it just stopped right on noon and I went and I like basically froze myself <laughs> and they froze as well. Such a classic little kid thing yeah, to get I was into kind a of freeze like, oh. position. <laughs> and then nothing happened and I was like, what's going on? And then they, they thought it was so funny. I still remember the good. betrayal of that prank. <laughs> they really got me. I was very gullible. Yeah. It's pretty good though. Very gullible. Five. It's What's okay. Five? I think it's most okay. five-year-olds are gullible. Yeah, it's okay. I, I locked, definitely got I locked both of them out on the balcony later apparently and then they had to get a neighbor to come help them because I was like, As nah. revenge? Yeah. That's great. That's I refused excellent. to open the door again. I love that. That's yeah. also a pretty good bit. That's yeah. really That's good, also pretty good. Yeah, also Daryl Sabara, big throwback to when he was seen leaving that sex shop with Megan Trainer with a bag of dildos. Hell remember yeah. That? I'm glad he, I'm glad he could time. get it. Good for them. Yeah. I, don't remember that, I hope he got that's pegged great. that night. Yeah. That's Hell, yeah, Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And now they're parents. Does, nice. Doesn't time move on? Oh, we they haven't even talked so about Jeremy Piven, really. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean. <laughs> can someone... Uh, the Piv. Can the, someone the Piv explain himself. Jeremy Piven to me? So, here's the thing. I know Jeremy Piven from two things. I'm going to first label the one that less people know him from. I know, it's always two things, isn't it? But this time it really is. Um, and the other, where everyone else knows him so, from, and why I hate him. There's two things. <laughs> so, the thing about this is that there's two things. 
<laughs> so firstly, because there's I two love things. the binary. <laughs> it's actually two things. <laughs> there's okay, so two genders. Uh, <laughs> I, what know, I can tell you I about that is how there's two things. <laughs> you know, I know I do this on the podcast, but this is also more of a joke about our real lives. <laughs> um, so there's two. <laughs> The first is something that I've even, at a point, uh, that I've even shown you, the Larry Sanders show. Yes. It's in the first two and a bit season. Or I can't remember whether it's mid-season two or mid-season three. I think it's mid-season, late season two. Uh, Jeremy Piven plays the head writer of the Larry Sanders show in the Larry Sanders show. And it's very notable because it's pre- the other thing, which me- which means before he had proper TV money. So he is more actively balding. He's got his little glasses. And he's much more schlubby and he's playing a comedy writer and he's much more willing to appear like unhot and stuff. Um, very fascinating look for Piven, a guy who <laughs> screams arrogance in every other sense. And uh, Yeah, his face looked like it should be punched. Yeah. He, he has a, the, one of the most punchable faces in Hollywood. But he in that show, and he's pretty good in it. He's funny. Like I'm. This is why this is why I'm fascinated with him. Is that he's really good in Larry Sanders show. But then he gets written off. It's a great episode where he gets written off. I don't think it was for animosity. I think it was just story reasons. Really, um, I reckon he probably sexually assaulted someone. But I, I, he's knows? got a history of it. Oh, oh does, does he? he? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there might it might have been that. Oh, um, yeah, like oh. a really bad history of it. Oh. The other thing though is Entourage. Which, I, which is a show that I find fascinating because it was so culturally ubiquitous at the time we were like kids and teenagers. And it's such a bro TV so show. So bro That's what's so funny the about it. It's like it's the kind show. of thing you laugh at because you're like, only douchebags watched Entourage. But it was massive, It was right? huge. Like, I was too young but to it's know about it. fucking really. vaporized. Yeah. There's no many, one remembers no it. No long haul, like no, nothing that has actually solidified in pop culture. Didn't they make many a movie people, and like no one saw it? Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, but many people have heard of The Wire, The Sopranos, yeah, yeah. other HBO shows for the time. It, but not yeah, Entourage. Not Entourage. It's fucking gone. <laughs> I, if I if I reference Turtle, no one knows who that is now. Mm. You well, know, some dude bro from 2008 might, but other than that. <laughs> Did say Franklin? I did say Franklin the <laughs> Turtle. Funny, yeah. <laughs> I mean, every episode of Entourage was the same, which was that, you know, Jeremy Piven playing the manager character uh, Ari Gold uh, would be on the phone being like get my client a fucking movie I can't and then you know yelling at the actor being like hey do the fucking movie and then it would you know end at like some rooftop bar and then the actor would like put his arms around Turtle and someone else and they would go like huh I love being boys who are friends and then mm. it would end and it's so he got lauded for that performance by the worst people in the world, right? Yeah. It was a great. I miss Entourage because it was an incredible filter for the people around you. If yeah. they were like, "Oh, I love Entourage," you're like, oh, "You can See just you walk later. away." Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you don't even need to say goodbye. And that's the funniest thing about Jeremy Piven <laughs> being in this. You're like, yeah. "Wow, it's that fucking douchebag from Entourage playing like four roles in yeah. his children's film." <laughs> he he is. You could define it different ways. I traditionally say four, which is TikTok, yeah. the Timekeeper, Danger Diamo, and his dad. Technically, only one of them is different. To yes, the one character. Technically, but he technically, many of those characters are the same four character. characters. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if you noticed that, but one of them has a sped up voice. Yeah, yeah, I did notice so, that. That's As part cool. of the attempt to very make us Alvin. not recognize TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So obvious. So unobvious, rather. So, so hard to tell. So hard to tell. So, so just when you tell. were like, oh, I don't really want to watch Jeremy Piven in this, don't worry, you get three more of him. <laughs> <laughs> Here well, is a bit more. But then also the reveal is that all of the goons that we see are also all Jeremy, Jeremy Piven. So you could say he, Jeremy Piven is like 30 guys in this. Yeah. Why do you think Robert Rodriguez is obsessed with one actor playing multiple roles? I don't know. I don't Eddie know Murphy why. A big influence. Yeah. Huge influence. I'll tell you what. He saw the Nutty Professor and he was like great model. Yeah. One of the only things I know about Robert Rodriguez's directing style outside of like you know the famous stuff is that he he directed a few episodes of The Mandalorian. Oh and yeah. There's all these clips of him directing it, and he apparently just would bring his guitar to set all the time. That's and just play Robert his Rodriguez. guitar while he was like thinking. He's a great guy. Yeah. He seems yeah. like a really very, sweet, sweet. Like guy. the fact that he made Spy Kids because he was like, I made it for my kids. Yeah. Like. I, and like, I mean, you know, this film is also empowering and for he, kids he in a way as well. He understands the magic of like what kids want. Yes. Yeah. Kids want to feel important. Kids want to feel like they have control and autonomy, that they can have their own adventures without their parents. And he just completely understood that. He he captured what magic means to a child and put it into Spy Kids. Yeah. Like when in the film, I genuinely loved the bit where they did go through all the original Spy Kids stuff like the, the equipment and like the gadgets when i was a kid and i watched spy kids that bit where she come and takes that little packet and puts it into the microwave and it creates a mcdonald's meal 
I was like, that's magic. Yeah. yeah. That's what I wish we had. Yeah. yeah. Did he do Shock Boy and Lava Girl as well? Yeah. 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 Which is a, on the list? Soon, yeah. yeah. It's soon. Man, I was a big fan of that movie. Were when I was you? A kid. I was like, I would watch it. I reckon for like a year, I would watch it every weekend. That's another one of those movies that because of my sister, I think I've seen it maybe 30 to 40 times. I have and probably we seen watched it, the same. it I think we watched it on one of the original cord. bad movie nights as yeah, well. Yeah, we did. We yeah. did. But I think that's similar in that it is also empowering to like imagination and yes. like being a kid and having your own yeah. adventure and like it's why it works. And these distinct visuals of like in the first Spy Kids, like Alan Cummings' character, like where he lives on that weird castle rock thing over Love the ocean is so magical. Yeah. Did we talk about that recently? Yeah, we're talking about too much coming. Because I was like, why does Hollywood have this. a boner for Alan Cumming? Cumming. 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 They yeah, did. Sure the 90s, they, they had a massive, massive thing one. for him. And, and, and I still think he was underutilized. I, I still, still wanted I think more. he was too much stuff. I love Alan Cumming. There are so many better BBC actors they could have pulled out of their eyes. To reduce Alan Cumming as simply a BBC What's actor. What's wrong with being a BBC actor? Nothing, but he's but that, that implies that that is his roots. His sto- he is, his roots is he is a theatre actor he is a more theater than anything. Actor. Like most English actors. Like most BBC actors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like almost sure, all of sure. them. <laughs> but a lot of them are like doing theater so that they can get on the BBC. Alan Cumming was like still doing cabaret years later, you know? Now, guys, do you guys have anything else to raise before I move on to trivia? Because I've just... got something important I need to talk about. I have one thing okay. to cap off the Jeremy Piven. All right. Which is there's a bit towards... Piven before we pivot? <laughs> nice, nice. Um, there's a bit towards the end where uh, they're in the, the sort of time void area, the sort of the Ratchet and Clank level. Um, <laughs> Which and, I love. Yeah. Yeah. Way, a the and spinning <laughs> red thing of death. The oh. way they're like, that's the yeah. second hand, it's that's the middle hand. And it fucking t- I was like, <laughs> what if it just beheaded him? <laughs> but it just, it just hits him. <laughs> it does, and it's like got him in the mouth or something. Yeah. I, was, I do think all of the production design of all the things is like fun. Yeah, it is it's fun. fun. Yeah. Um, but the death hand. It, it, it cuts into the scene and it's like a shot of, of Danger Diamo slash Timekeeper it's like it's cutting between it's a bit towards the end where like he we get more of uh, Cecil you know doing mm. uh, ASL because he's deaf you know um, and because <laughs> he's deaf and we oh, oh <laughs> Jesus what intrusive you wanna, thought was that do you want to give yourself a moment to cut that out because <laughs> he's or? deaf because <laughs> he's deaf Jesus you people I, are deaf right it's because okay. it's because I heard the way that I said it to try and speed through it and I was like that's dismissive <laughs> <laughs> No, I love it. I get it. I fully get what you were doing. I do get what you were doing as well. (laughs) Um, Anyway. This is the (laughs) ballet (laughs) Anyway. Signing away. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) It cuts to this bit. of It's meant to be. I think the implication is that TikTok has just jumped off of one of the spinning cogs around and onto the main cog. Mm. But obviously because it's all just a big green screen room. It's all good. That that isn't what actually happened in real life. Mm. And Jeremy Piven, I will say as TikTok is giving it the most Jeremy Piven possibly can. (laughs) And so he does this little, it just cuts and he's like mid this little hop (laughs) and he like twists his hands out and his head (laughs) and he like, and there's like such a loud clunk of him landing with no other dialogue. And then he's like, here we are. <laughs> it's my favorite. I actually rewound it to watch it again. It's so good. I need to go back and watch that yeah, again. Please do. We need to get it up. Yeah. I, we'll when, tweet it. When Claude really and I were watching fine. it, I literally was kissing Kat because Cassie was sitting on me and I turned to give her a little kiss. And as I did it, it was like I missed the second cameo of Danny Trejo. Like yes. the, just the shot of him yeah, there. Like, Claude was like, oh, you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Cameo's done. <laughs> yeah, he's frozen. He's frozen. Well, um, I had two things. Oh, please. Just very, very quickly. Please. Um, uh, please don't. No, keep don't. I The thing I said about the prop design, I think all the props are fun. I think the little things they fly are fun. I think the, 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 the guns of the time... Bandits oh, yeah. becoming their little punk. their little like skateboards, yeah. sky skateboards. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought it was yeah, all sure. fun. Was cool. And then um, I also thought it was really funny when the baby did a CGI uh, judo throw. Yeah, yeah, oh, right at the end. When, just when right at the end. She baby yoded. She baby yoded. Yeah. I did like it when Al- Jessica Alba was like, oh, baby's first bad guy. Oh my God, no, but it's got that. This yeah. movie has the worst final frame I've ever <laughs> seen. She's like walking towards <laughs> she the baby. Does this weird little hobble towards the screen and then it freeze frames on Jessica Alba <laughs> doing that and then fades to black. Don't you? 
<laughs> Forget about me. It's just this awkward little hop. The camera also adjusts slightly to follow her mid hobble, but yeah. then it just stops. I wonder if there was like something was meant to happen, like something got thrown on her face from the baby, and then they decided to not go it with it. It does feel like know. they probably it did feel like it was leading to earlier something. than originally written. Yeah. Well, guys, let's get into some trivia. IMDb trivia. Guys, Robert Rodriguez didn't want to make another one. Shocking. By another one, I assume this person meant film. Yeah. <laughs> or Spy Kids film. <laughs> Just another one in general. He was in no hurry to make another film for Harvey, for producer Harvey Weinstein. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah I, I wouldn't. There's a lot of fucking predators floating around this film. <laughs> fucking After hell, he yeah. was single-handedly blamed for the failure of Grindhouse. Oh, what? That's crazy. That's the reason he didn't want to collaborate That's with insane. Harvey Weinstein. Wait, Weinstein dick. blamed Just Rodriguez for fucking Death Proof and Planet Terror? I have working? no idea. That's crazy. However, Rodriguez owned Weinstein one more movie in a contract signed before Grindhouse was released, and Weinstein wanted a sequel. Ugh. The movie, this movie, was the result. Yeah. Apparently, Antonio Banderas came back, and <gasps> all of his scenes got cut. Oh, what? I would love to know what happened. Yeah, especially the way all of makes it sound like he had a whole like sea story. Yeah. Fully, all of his scenes were cut. Like wow. it didn't sound like a quick cameo. The genesis for this film came from an incident on the set of Machete from 2010. Mm. Apparently, the star Jessica Alba, who was in Machete, had her then one-year-old baby, Honor Marie, and was dressed to appear on camera when the baby's diaper exploded. Watching Alba change the diaper while trying to not get anything on her clothes prompted Robert Rodriguez to think, what about a spy mom? (laughs) That's why he is where he is. That exactly. Is why the is imagination on the this man. In- ingenious nature of Robert Rodriguez. It I is, would never have stopped to think this. It's really funny to think of Robert Rodriguez watching <laughs> Jessica Alba change her shitty little baby and just like, Spy mom. Spy mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, shitty little baby. Like, <laughs> shit himself. I know yeah. literally. But <laughs> you shitty little baby. <laughs> Whose shitty deaf. baby is this? <laughs> shitty little baby. <laughs> Jessica Alba's shitty little baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just the wrong words there. <laughs> the wrong tone around those words. Shitty that's little fair, baby. That's yeah, it's okay. It only goes out publicly. <laughs> yeah, for all time. Yeah. It's just there. Oh, only as long as we pay the host fees. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have them. Yeah. Well, here's the. That's interesting, well, though. Here's the final piece of trivia mm. and the one that I found by far the most interesting. This was the first film in theaters to incorporate scents for the audience to smell in the experience of the film. The Uh film used something called Aromascope, Uh which allowed audiences to smell odours and aromas from the film through scratch and sniff cards. No. No. So I had to dig a bit deeper into this. So, Rodriguez, do you have one here? (laughs) I wish I did. But this is what they looked like. I mean, it's not great for the podcast, but this is what it looked like. Oh, they're numbered. Oh, wow. They're numbered. Oh, there's a whole bunch of There's eight of them. You have a scratch and sniff little card with eight numbers on them. And in the film, when the corresponding scene would come up, the number would flash on the screen. So, like, number four. That's that's actually kind of cool then. And so, like, one of the smells was apparently, like, the bacon that they're fighting over in the front and first scene. Interesting. And they give it to the baby. You can scratch and sniff for bacon. That bacon which looks is, bad, by the way. Yeah. It looked bad. It didn't, yeah. I it's mean, not it, look good. It's probably prop bacon. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, I reckon. I but, don't think it was real bacon. I no, think it was prop bacon. Not. I think that's a pretty safe bet. And apparently, in Australia, you could get it for home use with the oh, Blu-ray oh, release. That's oh. more fun. But apparently, the gimmick wasn't great because a lot of the smells were like dirty diaper. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, shitty little as baby. As I said earlier, too many things get put on people. There's too much vomit and shit and just goo and stuff. There's and, so yeah, much yeah, goo. If, there's so much shit and goo and vomit. Most of the smells are going to be Effluvia, thank you. Effluvia. Yeah. Fancy. This movie is swimming in effluvia. I do think if I went to a movie cinema, though, and I was handed, like, okay, now you have to you have to interact with something while you're watching this. That's not really why I'm at a, at a movie, though. Yeah, that's true. To go, like, scratch, scratch, scratch. Yeah, that's true. No, no, no. An artist is asking you to participate, and you're like, ew. Well, he's not there. Come on, Gaiden. He's not there. That's, I mean, it's sure. The, the artist isn't physically present, so yeah. I need not care. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's not the Sousa that I know. That's not the Sousa that I know. Apparently the smells were, number one was bacon. Nice. Number two was blue cheese. But that's because uh, of I the like blue, blue goop that was put over Jessica Alba was meant to be that cheese. That is blue cheese, yeah. Yeah. The third what? one was candy. Yeah. It's blue what? cheese. It's meant to be blue, blue cheese. cheese. But it's, it's, she says it's her blue it's, cheese trap. 
But it's just it's, pure but blue. It's cheese it's, that's been dyed blue. But then why is it that sl- slippery? I don't know. Cheese fondue. Have you ever had cheese fondue? It's pretty slippery. Oh, God, she's, she's scalding. <laughs> <laughs> Third degree burn. She's burnt. <laughs> I thought she's so upset. <laughs> yeah. The fourth one was supposed to smell like candy. Oh, okay. Just generic candy. Just generic. So sugar. Well, then Sh- the, sugar. The then the next one was supposed to be candy. So there's two in so a row. Four and then and the five. Next there's not just one. two that's candy, uh-huh. but they're in what's, a row. Oh, sorry, it's three seven. and four. Uh-huh. And then five is candy. <laughs> For real? Uh-huh. <laughs> For real? Three in a row that are candy? Six. What's, what's six out? Baby poop. And yeah, there bad. Go. That's a okay. bad one. There it is. Yeah, that's uh, not good. Seven, dog farts. Oh, it's also not okay. good. And sure. eight was boogers. Not to boogers have, have a thing smell? that I would I, even though they live in the nose, I wouldn't describe them no. as smelling. Well, <laughs> I found an article where people were You're reviewing the nose. <laughs> people were reviewing the scratch and sniff cards because the thing is, I'm talking about this because I'm imagining this was the fucking nineties. Because what a weird gimmick. Sure, but this was 2011. 2011. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, this yeah, was yeah. not long ago. Like we were in high school when this happened. But it's it kind feels of feels like fifties. Like, like come to the yeah, come the to the cinema. Scratch and sniff cards. <laughs> but then these people did a, an article on it, come and they were cinema. basically talking about what they all smell like. And they did say, to be fair, the three different candies all smelt like different candies okay and the three candy you know the scene where the boy is looking at the three bowls of candy yeah i think mm. that's why there's three of them okay mm. but apparently the one that was the worst uh well apparently like the the baby poo one wasn't that bad because it kind of just smelled like chocolate but the dog farts oh one this person was like it smelled like vomit mm. it really smelled bad <laughs> the raw materials are just terrible oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> That sounds terrible. <laughs> the raw material. And then when they talked about boogers, they said, it smells like something, but it has absolutely nothing to do with anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the idea of the aromascope. I yeah. feel like that is, like again, a very 1950s, very yeah, cartoonish. Yeah. Get people down into the cinema. Yes. Try the Come aromascope. Try the aromascope. Scratch and now sniff in card. aromascope. Yeah. The idea that you get your Blu-ray and it comes with scratch and sniff cards <laughs> is crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's like when you used to get the 3D glasses to take Fully, home. You yeah, know? It's like, yeah, It's like, na- and then now imagine we'll get smell as well. Well, imagine needing to smell things to be more involved yeah, in the story. I don't know if that works. No. But I thought that was really interesting. But it's, it's like, the, it is really interesting. It's like those 40s cinemas that like roll you around and like, when yeah, like, so it says that they spray air at you. They spray air yeah, at you. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that. Water on like you. Stuff like the that. Sydney Center Point so Tower. Scary. I don't like it. They Did they have, have one at the Center Point? Oh, dude. The, oh, for Shrek 2.5D or Center whatever Point it was. The Tower, you had this 4D experience. You'd go up, sit in a massive chair. It would like fling you yeah, around while you pretended to like fly over Australia and then it would just spray you with wind and water. <laughs> and and like you'd kind of get off feeling like really fucking beaten up. And I hoped that would be my experience at the D box at Hoyt's. It just shakes a lot. I when I when I was a teenager, my mum had planned a trip to the Gold Coast, which for non-Australian listeners is the area of Australia that has most of our major theme parks all sort of near each other. Um, it's first, the Florida of Australia. Well, Canada is the Florida of Australia for sure. And then Canada. Canada, Canada is the Florida of Australia? Queensland. <laughs> 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 it's just k- <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> I can't be expected to keep up with all names. Um, <laughs> all, all few of our states. <laughs> first day there, I break my ankle um that's rough <laughs> yeah I how'd know. you break it um <laughs> there was there was a little sort of it was in one of the water parks and i was in abby put the fucking <laughs> i just want a bit <laughs> i just want a bit <laughs> see that's how it you, should are be are you fucking kidding me <laughs> i'm not well are enough you fucking <laughs> kidding me so how'd you break your ankle we're in the middle that of was so funny <laughs> Silent as a whisper. As a it whisper. wasn't. Whisper it was silent. silent. She didn't make no noise Put that on. I'll be as silent it as was the silent. grave. You're the one that got big, distracted there, Michelle Sinclair. It was water park area. That w- it was in one of the water parks. It was a big like, playground sort of area. And then there was like a big bucket. Big bucket of water oh, that had a thousand about. liters in it. And, then yeah. it jumps, and then all the all the kids would scramble to it. So I went to go scramble. I jumped and it landed on my foot sideways. Oh. So I fell down and all the kids climbed around me as then a thousand liters of water. <laughs> Straight onto me, and my mum was watching, and she said she saw as there was just a group of children, and then they all fled away, and then I was lying on the ground. Thousand liters. Thousand 
leaders of water. <laughs> so you fell in first, and then everyone crowded. Yeah, and then the water. I jumped. arrived first. So you got yeah. you got waterboarded after you broke your. Yeah, ankle. So I was on the, I was lying, which means Jeez. I got more water because I'm horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> My whole body just like smashed the water. <laughs> And it meant that I couldn't go on almost any of the rides at any of the parks. Oh, <laughs> like, I was in a wheelchair oh, getting man. wheeled around oh, from ride to ride. First day at I'm first day. <laughs> it was like lunchtime. Oh, my um, God. Anyway, <laughs> so there was only a handful of, a small handful of rides that I could go on anywhere. Like, SeaWorld, I could get wheeled around. But also, that was the place that the wheelchair provided I couldn't wheel myself, so I often just got put places so my mom could go smoke. <laughs> <laughs> at least at Movie World, I had like. <laughs> uh, I could- Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> but at Movie World, I could I could do two things. I could go on the Scooby Doo Spooky Coaster. It was the only roller coaster I could go on, so I went on it like eight times. No, it's not like the really tame one that's inside. Well, I thought it was still scary because there's a bit where you go backwards. Yeah, that Ooh. is scary. And I find them really scary. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I find them scary too. And thank Roller you. coasters. Um, mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hate them. Mm. Yeah. I hate them. Um, especially going backwards terrifies me. Oh. None of us here are adrenaline no. junkies. No. We're all like, this is my comfort zone. I'm staying. Yeah. I, I like was, to be alive and not scared about a, my life. Yeah. A different time I went and I went on like the Tower of Terror. <laughs> Thing where you you get shut up and then you and then you just drop back down yeah. and everyone else was like wow and I was just like I don't want to go on that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My sister though loves every ride. She went on every single That's one. Nice. She's the only one who went on every single one because she doesn't. I think she doesn't fear death. She doesn't I don't think she fears anything. No, she doesn't. I think she gets on and she's like I am safe. Mm. This will just be a fun time. Yeah. And she's like whoa. Um, anyway, the only other thing I could do at Movie World was to experience the Shrek 2.5D, like, 4D experience thing. So I kind of just did that, like, three times, and then I was like, eh, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's oh, fine. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, guys, <laughs> I, I, I have one weirdly written goof. Yes, please. But also, it's not really a goof. It was technically in the trivia section, but I'm like, this is a goof. Yeah, sure. The OSS never knew they had a giant clockish time travel device under the building. <laughs> Seven found this helpful. Thirteen found it unhelpful. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I think there's 13 people are pretty correct. <laughs> How did that make it into the trivia? <laughs> it's, not it's not even a plot. It's not a plot hole. It's a secret. Yeah, it is. And they're like, why didn't they know? Or really, it's just they never knew. <laughs> they never knew. But also, they did know. They said the Armageddon device is there. They didn't know it was being used. Take it up with this guy. It reads as a comment of like someone. It's like someone thinking out loud, but on the internet. Mm. Yeah, and then just posting it. Someone That's thought a sentence. That. Yeah. That's what I love about IMDb. Yeah, you it's can insane. just think something unhinged and you can post it. Yeah, hundred percent. Do you guys want to hear some reviews on that note? Yeah. Oh yeah. Reviews. Well. On Rotten Tomatoes, this film has an approval rating of 23%, which is actually, That's I mean, it's terrible, high. but for us, well, it's yeah, really right. high. <laughs> it, uh, the website's critics' consensus states, burdened by a rote plot and unfunny scatological humor, all the time in the world suggests that the Spy Kids franchise has run its course. And Common Sense Media gave the film one out of five stars, writing, positive messages can't save the worst film in this action series. Here's one review that I've taken from IMDb. Oh. This is all I've got. And oh. it's because it's long, but oh, also okay. <clears throat> um, there weren't that many fun ones. A lot of them were just yeah. like, yeah, I know it's not that great, but my kids liked it. And I'm like, fair enough. Oh, Super sure. fair enough. I liked it too. Yeah, I think kids would have a really good time. I would have fucking loved it. And some people going on being like, I actually loved this film when I was a kid and it came out. And I'm sure. like, fair enough. I and I also too. think there's a lot of shit stuff that's made for kids. This is not the worst. No, you know? fully. In no way. I do think the bar for children should be higher, but yes. I think there's definitely a lot worse Agreed. than this Agreed. But I think this is, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, this was a review. Yeah. It's a 10 out of 10 review left by Jimmy Waters 20. Uh, <laughs> and it was called Great. Okay. This was left in 2011. Great. Great. Now, it's important to note that there's no punctuation. Oh, okay. it's one of these. So I'm going to have to <laughs> see how far I can get. 
it was great. The 4D rocks. It was funny. It was cool. It was fun. It was pack it. You will like this movie a lot. It was a really good movie to see. It was a good 3D movie. I think you will like it too. It was funny. I think it was a blast. Go see it. Oh, I can't. There's no punctuation. Go see it today before it gets sold out. I really enjoyed it. You will too. It was a silly movie. I enjoyed it so much. I give it a four out of four stars. That is how good it is. It was the best Spy Kids movie ever. It was the bomb to watch See Me Smell It in the best popcorn movie you could ever see. That was a really funny movie for the family to see. It was better than Glee. Is this a pat song? I was just thinking, <laughs> you're doing a pat song. You're actually doing a pat song. We set this up earlier. Ah! That's crazy. Better than three, Glee 3D. It was funny than, it was better than Toy Story. It was better than Toy Story 2. It was better than Toy Story 3. It was funny. You will never have to see it because if you don't, you missed out on this good movie. It was really funny. You will see 3D the whole way through. It was great for everyone. Whole movie to see. It was a blast to see it in 3D. It was a good movie. You will like it a lot because it is just a good movie to see. It was funny. It was silly. It was stupid. My mom said it was for kids, but I loved it a lot. It was a really good movie. I enjoyed it a lot. And you will like it too. It was funny. It was so good. It was funny. It was a great 4D movie. It was a great 3D movie. You will like it. It was so good. It was a funny, fun movie. Just to go see it today before it gets to be sold out movie. It was a really good 3D movie. You will like it a lot. It was a great 4D movie to see you people. We'll like it a lot to go see it today. It is a funny, 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 funny movie. You will like it so much. It is a four star movie by me. Three stars by my mom. It was a hoot. It was a really good movie. This was the best movie I saw this year. Please, yes, hit like my review if it was a blast. It felt if you were aware in the movie, it was a funny movie that you should play for a year. It was a funny, funny, funny movie to see. It was a funny movie. I hope you enjoy it. I like this movie in 4D a lot. And the 3D was good. Oh, oh my God. Well done, Abby. Thank you. Um, well done. Snaps. Pat a song. Oh, yes, it's snaps, snaps, Pat snaps. Pat True, you need to see it. It's just like the most oh, it's so long. Text. That is, I, every time you kept starting again, I was like, surely this is the end. Just and then you going. started again and again. That's it was funny. Crazy. It was silly. It was silly. It was great. It was a really, really, really good movie. <laughs> Should we all take a guess at how old the kid was who wrote that? Six. Mm. No, he writes too well. Maybe nine. 58. <laughs> it was me. His mum said it was for kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean you. Yeah, I mean, you eight. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cute, cute, though. I'm really glad he... Do you think he liked it in 4D? I think he did. I think he I liked think it in 4D. Did, yeah. I think it was a really, 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 really good movie. Really, 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 yeah, really funny, really, funny movie. It was funny and silly. Really good. Funny, and great in 3D really, really, and 4D. Really good. Yeah. Uh, well, Gaiden, yeah. that was that kid's review. Mm. What was your review for Spy Kids 4? <coughs> well, and, guess... hey, you've got all the time in the world. Uh, nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, um, like I said, I think it's actually pretty strong thematically, and I think it... <laughs> I think it teaches a nice lesson about Gaten how we it. all need to have more time with our family. I think it's quite sweet. I think it teaches good kids a good lesson like that. I yeah. do not like how much uh, shit is on gun You really on don't like the I, effluvia. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like having things Did on me. Did you get like gunked? It. As a, as a child, child. Yeah, it's my deep is that your seated. sensory it's my wound. when Gaiden was a little child I was gunked the effluvia <laughs> gunked on Nickelodeon the effluvia ah! <laughs> um uh, I, I don't like Ricky Gervais, so obviously there's a star for that. Thank you. Um, what an ally. And also, he's not doing a very good job. Uh, but I do think it's fun, and I think the production design is fun. I think the kids are generally pretty all right. Mm. I think the, the boy is Hey, the kids better. are all right. Yeah, the kids are all right. <laughs> and Jessica Alba, I think, is genuinely good. Mm. And I had a pretty fun time watching it. Yeah. When on a Sunday night, I was cooking, and I realized, fuck, I have to watch that movie for the podcast. Not the worst movie. I turned it on. It was a blissful 90 minutes. Yeah. It was over and done with quickly. Yeah. And you like the Spy Kids franchise. I like the Spy Kids franchise. So it's nice when you, at least you like the franchise yeah. rather than it being a franchise you don't give a shit 100%. About. Yeah. So, like, we do out of 10 mm. on here, right? Yes, Gator. Shh. Calls himself a fucking <laughs> yeah. friend of the podcast. He's been here seven times already. Come uh, on. No, we do it out of 17. <laughs> idiot. I'm sorry. I'm still reeling from that review. Um, <laughs> yeah, my, my larynxes as well. I, I, I'd give it, like, a solid, yeah, five. Six? 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 Five or six? Five or six. Stake your claim. Yeah. Pitch six, it in the ground. Six feels too high. It does feel high. It feels a little high. I'm going to say five. This movie's this not five. great. It's not great. Five. I'm going to say five. Nice. Yeah. Uh, look, I mean, the major thing I disagree with is I think the kids have no riz. I think they have negative riz. I think it, it partly is... I know adult Daryl Sabara does not necessarily have any riz. Hey, 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 hey. Leaving a sex shop with a bag full of dildos with your wife? That's full riz. Full of riz, That's baby. riz, No, no, that's, that's riz so negative it becomes rizful. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, yeah, I we, 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 we've already talked about that with Daryl Sabara, but I do think young Daryl Sabara 
very charismatic. Young yeah. Alexa Vega, we've talked about very charismatic. Very, charismatic. Young, very, very charismatic. And young Daryl Savar, especially in Spy Kids 2, when he's trying to woo, you know, the blonde yeah. girl. Yeah. So fun. fun. Really when fun. he's like really dancing fun. at that ball at yes. the beginning of Spy yeah. Kids 2. And it's it's unfair to always compare performances, but being a sequel that is also a sequel where the first three had one set of kids, you are cr- inherently creating a direct thing to contrast yeah. against. And I think the, these kids. The kids didn't. Th- yeah. They don't live up. I think, no, I think if this was its sure. own thing, I think they do a perfectly good job for the Fully. movie. It's just hard you know? to compare. Like it's hard yeah. to compete with Carmen and Junie from yeah. the first films because they had they were so charismatic on screen as a sibling dynamic. Yeah, and they were having fun in the role. You could tell not that these kids weren't, but there was just something about that initial I, combo. I do think it's both very fun and very gibberish. Like Cecil's whole shtick is that he's a super genius, which means at one point we see him reading a book that just on the front says physics. quantum physics. Yeah, <laughs> he wears a shirt that says E equals MC squared. That's what Claude was pointing out. He was like, "Where can I get that shirt?" <laughs> <laughs> and also it means that the gadget he gets is he can punch really good, yeah. which has nothing to do with anything. Well, it's because he's a wimp in real life, you see. <laughs> but, like, her you whole see? thing is pranks and she gets a prank kit. Yeah, I don't know, man. He's really smart, yeah. so he gets fists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. And also... He couldn't get smarter. I mean, he, which he at one point uses to swing around Alexa Vega, who oh, holds her fist out to punch everyone. That is my favourite part. I remember that's what stood out to us last time, and yeah. that's what stood out to me this time. <laughs> Equally. They all fall over, like, bowling pins. And she's just going... <laughs> <laughs> Equally, when Joel McHale shows up, there's five guys behind him, and he does one yeah, roundhouse and knocks all out. Which means uh, he's apparently really good at fighting. Yeah, you who know, knew? who knew? It's it's absolutely insane. What's the score, Michelle? I think those things do bump it up from being anywhere near as bad as some of the other things. It can't be a three point five. It's not a three point five. I think, but I I just I like like Gaiden. I'm struggling to give it anything over a five because it feels. <sighs> like this movie's not good. I think if I showed this to a regular person, they would be like, "What the fuck is this? <laughs> Why are you showing me yeah. this?" Um, I, but I have to, so I'm gonna give it a five point one. Just oh, so that in my heart, in my after heart, after you talked Gaiden down from a six. I know, I know, but I, I want to give it more than five because I have you can rewatched get, you can this. You I've want. revisited this. You I know? feel like you talked Gaiden down and then you've gone over him. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to win. You did, didn't you? <laughs> it is a competition. Well, I note, note, I didn't give it a six. <laughs> Abby. Uh, I, I really like. Yeah. It. I, I'm, I'm this on is your the same arc page on the as podcast. you guys. Honestly, I, I'll give it a five point one as well. Nice. I think it's great. So we both beat Gator. <laughs> yeah, we did it. <laughs> we Idiot. win. <laughs> Idiot. No. Man, we could have all done the same thing, but you didn't. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you're a guest in our home. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was uh, Spy Kids for Gaiden. Thank you for joining us for the eighth time now. It's yeah. my pleasure. Uh, it's a, yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a privilege. It's an honor. But it's also a right, okay? It's a right for us to have you on this oh, show. Yeah. And we're going to have you again soon. Yeah, we will. I hope so. For sure. You'll I love had. coming on. It's great. You're already minimum booked in for one you. more. Yeah. Yes. Which is the first one you claimed like yes. four years ago. Many, many moons ago. <laughs> yeah. I claimed it. But thank you for coming back. And uh, well, guess what? <laughs> we're on social media. That's crazy. What? I, know. I never would have guessed that. I never yeah, would have well, guessed that. That's we crazy. do have some channels. For uh-huh. instance, we're on uh twitter or x under rate descend pod we're actually also on tiktok under rating descending wow. and you can even email us directly at rating descending at gmail.com <gasps> you can yeah <gasps> amazing wow. i love writing emails yeah i love reading emails yeah. wow. so it's a really good show but you know once you've done that and you're like i want more of these two crazy gals well you could find me on my own social media you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at michelle.stclair. You can find me on Letterboxd at mstclair. Or you could also go and check out on YouTube No Ordinary Love Series. You could also check out Shippers Series. Or you could find Unerased on Instagram at minus 18 youth or on TikTok at unerased.tv. And you can also find... Oh, sorry. Do I plug? Yeah. Yeah, Can I plug? Give a plug. Give a plug. You can follow me on Instagram (laughs) under Gaden Salad, which is G-A-D-E-N. Salad. Uh, you can watch Dream Again, which is a film Michelle and I worked on together that Michelle edited. Uh, you can look it up on YouTube under my uh, YouTube channel, Gatos Films, or you can watch it on Short Films Matter. And that's everything right well, now. Well, I mean, you have another film coming out at Red Sands. I do. Festival. I mean, that's on. You can't get a ticket. So, Sunday. You know. uh, but yeah, Friendly Fire will be out in the world sometime soon. And yeah, you can see the work that Michelle and I have made together. 
And also, we're on YouTube now, under Rating Descending. Mm. Don't try and find me. I won't allow you to. <laughs> I'm like a little cyber ghost. <laughs> but, but also, you've done all that. You're like, I just want to support these crazy girls and their eight-time friend. Yeah! <laughs> well, you could do that by leaving us a review wherever you get your podcast, because... It really, yeah, makes, it really a makes a difference. difference. It really does make it a difference. It really does make a difference, guys. Well, once again, that was Spy Kids 4, and that was Gade and Souza. What are we watching next week, Michelle? Next week, we're watching Dance Flick. Which what the I can fuck is that? <laughs> only assume. What the fuck is that? <laughs> which I can only assume. I'm going to double check right now. but I Is it a flick about assume. dancing, <laughs> do you think? <laughs> Is it like a step-up movie? It is a 2009 American musical comedy film directed by Damien Dante Waynes. Waynes? Yes. One of the Waynes family? Starring many members of the Waynes family. (laughs) Like Marlon? Uh, yep, there's Marlon. Fuck, he's back so soon. <laughs> so so. You know how much so I talked about how much sooner. I like Marlon Wayans? I think I'm going to be eating my words. Yeah, I think you are going to be eating your words. So <laughs> so sooner than we thought. Or you'll be on the podcast yet again to go, mm, it's actually pretty good. Well, yeah, right. We had a it's one week reprieve we from the Wayans. <laughs> <laughs> we would All be right. out of a job without the Wayans, though. <laughs> All right, join us for another Wayans film then. Yeah. I'll be listening. Hell See yeah. you around. Bye. Bye. Bye.